Welcome to the Candlest Cellar. My name is Nelson. I'm joined here tonight by Big Cat, Erica Katubig. Hi. Lovely Hello. to have you here. So excited. As always. <laughs> and this is probably the coolest class that we're going to do as far as um, things that we'll do in the cellar. And what's gotten me so excited is that uh, it's something new to me, but as far as like exploring what that all looks like, but definitely something that I've had many a times before. Yes. Yeah. So we are talking about boxed and canned wines today. Um, oh, yeah. Hey, okay, welcome back. <laughs> My name's Nelson, and I'm here with Erica Katubik. We've got Big Cat here, and we are going to lead you through wine drinking. Excuse me, we're talking, leading you through boxed wines mm -hmm. uh, and canned wines, a sommelier symposium. Yes. All right, so let's, let, let's start with this. Let's, let's look at what's in the box uh, and go through the format and um, talk about what's ahead. So why don't you take it away? Yeah, so um, there should be a list of all the wines that we're going to be drinking um, and in order and the really fun things that are in your box this week are so delicious and it'll be really great to taste them together side by side, figure out which of our pairings worked the best and, um, and we're really excited for it. So the first, uh, first things first yeah. is that in addition to these gorgeous pairings, we also have, we're all enjoying dinner together, yeah, right? Yeah. We're having dinner together for the so first in time. In the box, you also got two of these. Go! Swedish meatballs, and, Swedish meatballs and gravy, mashed yeah. potatoes, cheesy brassicas, and a chocolate brownie. You know, I will say that these are kind of, um, Kind of like gold because, <laughs> which is actually really funny, is because none of us have, no one on staff has tasted any of them, with the exception of our incredible kitchen, who has yeah. gotten to do all of the R and D. But um, we're we're the envied lucky ones who get to taste yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, so the trial. Which is so well, let's excited. see. What do we have here? Beautiful box. Step one: pull container from box. I can do this. I can. I right. can make. I can do this. Okay. Step two: place container in microwave or oven. It goes through it, all these instructions here. Okay. If you're doing it in a microwave, uh, leave the film on for both microwave and oven, and it gives you baking temps here: 375 on a baking sheet for 25 to 30 minutes. Step two. Okay. So I take yeah. the plastic off. Yep. I'm. I'm doing. You'll this leave in. it on. You'll leave the plastic on. For the oven too. Isn't that crazy? In oh my the God. oven. Yeah. Oh my Wild, gosh. Huh? Okay. 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 Plastic left on in Correct. the oven. Yep. Okay, okay, okay. And what temperature? It's 375. Okay. For about 12 minutes. I, I think I can actually do this. No, no, actually. let's see. 375 for 25 to 30 minutes for the entree. Okay, okay. Desserts, 375 for about 12 minutes. Cool. So, yeah, I, I can throw this in for you. Right? Yeah, you yeah. Will you do that? I'm going to leave the chat here. Mark for Chandler, yeah. Hold please. On a <laughs> this thing here, do it we, says we, on the we right side. Oven. We're going to do oven. We're going oven. We're going oven. We're going to go oven. Okay. It's going to work for the timing of the show. Okay. I love that you already... Oh, thank you. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. you know, I haven't even had one of these yet. I'm, I'm super stoked. To we'll work. let you know how I do. Yeah, please. That's <laughs> <laughs> really nice. All I right. can't yeah, wait. You can we probably will let you know. We'll believe this. I'll be yeah. right back, you guys. It goes in the top right-hand right -hand corner. It says, a can list. There is a fine affair. Who says a night out on town can't be had while staying in? Go big and go home. Oh, geez. With Candlest's fine Who frozen wrote that food. Copy? <laughs> fine was... dining never felt so easy and gourmet is only minutes away. Candlest, serving America since 1950. Woo! So cool. I love it. Huh? I'm so excited. Actually, this box is really beautiful. I know, right? That's a great picture upstairs in the penthouse. If you've ever walked through, um, that's a really cool shot. Yeah. All right. I don't like wasting too much time okay, okay, okay. before we get our first drink, but why don't we mm. do that? Um, you got six sort of drinks in front of you. We're going to start with the Nomadica uh, white wine. It's a sparkling white out of California. And um, crack the can and let's get started. I got one right here. Yeah, 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 yeah. We already have some in the glass. Yes, 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 yes. But Erica, tell us about this one. Yeah, Nomadica is really amazing and so delicious. It's women winemakers, which is like, yeah. Mm -hmm. So two lady winemakers, um, oh, uh, Kristen, Emma, they're based out of LA. Um, and this is, I'm gonna double check. It's, yeah, it's coming out of Mendocino and it's 50% Chardonnay and 50% uh, Malvasia. Yeah. But 100% 
delicious. Yeah. Have you had a chance to get your nose in it? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, like what we're doing here, as far as like breaking things down for wine pairings, why don't we like, why don't we start with um, putting them in a glass? Yeah. Uh, just so we can evaluate what the quality of the wine is, give it a fair chance, evaluate it for just its nose better than you could or ever would and out of a can. Uh, and then I, and, and accept the wine and appreciate it on the palate the way you would a normal wine. Just to, again, give it a just fair shot be, before you let's start. Let's be clinical about this. Yeah. Okay. For a minute. Yes. And we'll then, be, yeah. Like we start, we start really enjoying it, right? Okay. And I think that's part of our world where we, we are a fine dining restaurant upstairs, but I would rather, this is how we drink at home. This is what we'd rather drink. This is kind of what we drink a lot. Um, something that's available in stores and then some that we're, we're like exploring the idea of bringing in more canned wines or box wine. So things that may not be here just yet, but being brought in uh, as a specialty item as we start to see that need. Okay. You know? Yeah, go for I'm it. Gonna, it I'm gonna smell this. It looks, gosh, it has this like just golden, mm. just slightly golden and a little sort of like silvery. And right yep. on the nose, like this like gorgeous golden or like mm. like yellow pear kind of right at the top, right at the tippity top. I think like a ripe kind of golden pear, mm -hmm. you know? Um, I, I already want to drink it. I'm doing it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't stop. Drink it. <laughs> hey, Nelly, everyone's asking us, where can you buy Nomadica? Right now, it's only online. We brought in everything that... Um, the state would 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 get, um, but we're working with the distributor to have it in some retail stores too. Cool. So um, cool. Kristen, who's been doing it, had been, had been here for dinner once before, and I'd been in touch with her. And she seems really cool, um, and I think this is something that we should have in the market more often. Yes. Yeah, this for sure. But that happens with you, with you being yeah. excited about it, and us and us telling you about it, you know. And I think. It's delicious, yeah, right? On yeah. the palate, it's really, really delicious. Yeah, it's got a great nose to it. And like any wine, I think you, you miss it a little bit from, from the can, but put it in a glass and you see it jump. Uh, Malvasia is known for that really floral note, right? Yes. After the wine, Chardonnay, it's sort of like comforting, familiar, um, creaminess on the palate, all of those things work. Yeah. yeah. Awesome wine. And I think it's, you know, it's not overtly sparkling either. Right. You know, it's not like, fresh soda right out of the can mm. or anything it's just it's actually quite delicate um, yeah it's got a good froth to it yes and i think it has this like high like a uh, kind of candy-esque yes uh, high acid like little yeah. bit of um that ripe fruit to it i think yeah. it's i think it's very cool you know like all of those things and i just looked down at at um the gummy bears it got my mouth watering like okay. gummy bears do that already for me um, but it's got this powder on it called Li Hingui, or Li Hing, right? It's a yeah. Chinese salted cured dried plum that they've pulverized and then created a dust. I usually have like these plums um, in my desk every time I go to Hawaii and I come back and I bring a bag or I have lemon peel or I have something. I just like take a small bite from it and I, and I then suck on the seed. Um, but to put it on candy and to put it on different things with fresh fruit that or now gummy bears, money. It's so good. If you've not had any of this You're at not home, just making this up. You actually mean it pairs well. Try it. Yes, yes. Yeah. So you've already had Mark, a taste of the wine. No, I need, I, thank you. I was just feeling like, you know, <laughs> I'm off here in the corner. I need and this is We like, gave him some wine. This so. <laughs> is uh, an incredible pairing, right? So for Li Hing, when it's dried, it's a salted plum, so you can get um, salt, something sweet, you get tons of acid, uh, and then um, maybe the slightest bit of bitterness from it. And then you all know what gummy bears taste like. Oh my gosh, right? this pairing Rainbow is so good. Rainbow flavors. Oh, you almost don't know what you're gonna get because the limoy has just got that red sort of like food coloring on it. Uh, it's just like dust and I am like so excited about it. Jump in, pop one oh in your mouth. Oh my gosh. If not had limoy before, you're totally. gonna change. Your world. It totally changes the wine for me. Like mm. it, it completely yeah. changes how the wine pineapple. tastes. Oh. oh yeah. I feel like it brings out more of the like tropical notes of the wine. So go back to the wine. Mm. Um, 
and instead of that pear, I'm getting like, like a bitter, like grilled pineapple. Like, ugh. I'm telling you. It's so I'm telling you. interesting how different the wine tastes after we have this, mm -hmm. right? This is one of my all time favorite snacks. Gummy bears, if you know me, okay, to already be, I, is. Okay, some secret, Kenla's some <sighs> secret, okay, is that we're obsessed because we're constantly tasting wines all the time and we're you know, studying and we're obsessed with sugar. So yeah. we are eating candy all the time. Like the wine station and us sums, like we're yeah. eating candy, particularly gummy bears. All but the time. I think like every single wine team has a specific type of palette, not just for wine, but for candy. So mm -hmm. if you're ever visiting a cellar and you're like, what's the candy that everyone drinks? Yeah. Or sorry, eats. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've been trying to stay away from them because I just I like love them too much, but I'm gonna control myself. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna move on and we're gonna kinda go through some yeah, of these yeah. wines. The same thing. We're gonna break down these wines in a glass. Uh, and then maybe drink them from a vessel that we would normally drink them uh, outside of like where you would normally drink a box wine. Mm -hmm. So let's draw. Let's let's go with our first um, box wine. Let's do hey, the Paul. Sauvignon Blanc. And, you know, a quick hey, note about Paul. the gummy bears. People are asking about gummy bears, and yeah. I just want to say you guys made these by hand, right? We, we, you can buy the Lingi Mui powder. We yep. took gummy bears, we shook them up as a oh. staff, and we packed yep. them up. So Limoy powder, hand carried from Hawaii. You, you uh, actually yep. brought it back from Hawaii. Yeah, it was, it was, it was from Maui. To the degree that you went to pair a gummy bear to a wine. Yes. I just want to explain I, that. I took a COVID test in it's order to go to Hawaii. <laughs> uh, it wasn't just that. I did a lot of wonderful things there. I actually got engaged. Oh, wait, did you get engaged? I was wondering if you were yeah. going to bring that up. Okay. Um, last week uh, on my trip to Maui. Oh, and um, so nice. like before Sorry, I came ladies. back, I needed to bring my fiance bag and suddenly he moi. And that was oh. like a highlight for both so the trip and I. Somebody did ask on the chat, what's Nelson been up to? I have a hunch that person might have, might have actually known. I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah, that's that. Look at that, yeah. huh? Well, we're gonna go into this wine. So what I did was I just like broke through the box, pulled the nozzle out, and there's actually like a little uh, spot to, to rest the nozzle over. And that's pretty simple. And you pull this plastic piece off, like so. And you, <gasps> me first, have got me first, me first. Wine in a box, ready to rock. Yay! Our first wine is Pig Pool, uh, the Panay, Le Petit Frog, out of France. That's enough. <gasps> Ooh. And you know, a, a wine like this. When I walked through the aisles and I saw what was available, like I'm looking at Boda Box, a couple of like brands this is that like make real everything. Real research we did. We did real so much deal research. Yeah. yeah. Because we wanted to find mm. things that you, everyone would be able to find and yep. drink, you know, or and things that we really liked. Um, was actually really funny is to choose these wines. We had so many more wines to uh -huh. choose from, but to choose these wines, we we gave it to our staff. We were like, mm -hmm. rate these wines, mm -hmm. and so these are the these are Pick winners. Your favorites. These yeah. are winners. Yeah, I feel good about it. And then I wanted to have a range. I mean, these this is something you'd find on a shelf. I went to Met Market. I think I went to Total Wine and a couple of other small spots or bigger places. So they're available. They're they're relatively inexpensive. You know what? Give you an idea of what this is like. Look. That holds the equivalent <laughs> of this bottle of wine. So this is three liters of wine in a box or three liters of wine in a bottle. We could drink that too if you wanted. This <laughs> looks fun. Where's the wine key? It's a different class. That's, that's <laughs> a price difference. Spring semester. Oh, we could drink it. No, 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 no. It's okay. Seriously. But it's fine. It's, it's really I mean, cool. it's for class. This is Any, cool. Anything it's educational. Can anything can happen anything on can air. happen in the cellar. It's really um, exciting. <laughs> but, <laughs> but isn't that incredible? Like what, uh, the amount of wine that you get uh, in a box, uh, and we'll talk about the pros and cons of it uh, in just a little bit, but um, to appreciate it, you, you, you sort of like step back just a little bit, um, put it in a glass, and then maybe just, just sort of like like forget that you poured it from a box, but you remember what you paid for it on the shelf. It's economical and it's something that, you know what, delivers. Yeah, well, absolutely delivers. Erica, um, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about this wine and then why don't we talk about the history and what we think of like the history of box wine, okay? Yeah. So Le Petit Frog, it's, it's sort of a phrase of, for pig pool that says stinging the lips. 
So this wine here is high acid, bright and refreshing, tons of citrus notes and green apple. It's got a little bit of a brassy note on, uh, on its appearance and it smells fresh. I mean, it's like every dry white wine that I want is usually Sancerre and Sauvignon Blanc to have citrus notes and a little bit of that sort of like tree fruit. And then I want it to be dry on the palate. So let me see where it's at. It is, it's bone dry. It's so refreshing. It's like gulpable. It's so good. It's so good. It's so easy. I'll tell you, a wine like this, uh, it's not offensive. It's, uh, it's a gulpable. I say gulpable. Yeah, yeah it's chuggable. a chuggable. I say chuggable. Yeah, it's all those things. And you know, when I'm, I think, I think every wine should have a purpose. So if you're just having it at home while you're preparing dinner, at lunch, something casual, low stress, go for something like this. Yeah. Um, and that's why I picked this wine. I thought it was a fantastic buy, great value, something I see often on the shelves, um, and I really enjoy it. So, yeah. I think for me, when I'm looking to drink white wine, the, the, it hits all the marks. Right. I just want like high acid, gulpability, something that will taste really good extra chilled and also yeah. coming up to room temperature. Yeah. And I don't think that I, you know, I don't have a problem with box wine at all because classically, when we talk about the history yeah. of I'm put larger- a ice in mine. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I I, wow. So I'm insider, so I'm trick. <laughs> wow. I do it often <laughs> and I'm not afraid and not ashamed. Say, say it out loud. Yeah. I think this is a little really bit important. of ice in your like wine, money, a little bit of ice goes a long way. Um, obviously there's tricks, we'll tell you all about it, about how to keep this cold. I mean, you just leave it in your refrigerator, it's all good, but let's say you're outside. It's a warm summer afternoon, salmon's on the grill, Ugh. or short ribs, and Sounds you're just like waiting, it. you know, like you're just sort of like hanging out and chilling, and then all of a sudden your wine's just warm. warmed up. Too warm. Yeah, throw a little bit of ice in it, um, dilutes it just a little bit, but you're gonna finish it quickly. The moment it's cooler on your palate, you'll actually like enjoy it a lot more. Yeah. Um, and that's that's what I like. I got, I got no shame in that. I think mm. it's, I think for me, I mean, for you, definitely, mm. but people are, are constantly like, oh, what's the worst wine you've ever had? Or like, oh, you know, I'm too ashamed to come into the cellar because yeah. I only drink box wine oh. or something. And the thing is, it's like that we drink it too. Yeah. You know, I feel yeah. like you were right. And there's wine for every single um, occasion and for every right. single, you know, time in your life. And, and I think this is delicious. Yeah. And classically, you know, box wine or wine in larger volumes is kind of what the norm was for drinking alcohol up until the advent of glass that wasn't incredibly expensive. You know, so I, you know, when you talk about house wines, house red, house white, that's so much more economical for, um, like a 17th century barkeep or mm -hmm. you know even like a little italian trattoria in the you know late 19th century I, th I feel like historically large volume wine has always been the norm you know right i mean Don't how often yeah i hear this story all the time people go and visit yes tuscany or go to go to paris yeah. or get them even more nor not so much paris maybe go to the countryside yeah um Go someplace in the Leon. Loire, go to Lyon, Leon. and right then you find Leon, a small right? little bistro, Ugh, charming. That's like the story, yeah, though. Yeah, right. You know, it was it was early in the night, a beautiful spring, sort of like early evening. Wow. We go to this this like little bistro, and they had the best wine. Yeah, house wine came out of a cask. Yeah, right eight in. euro out of a cask, Ugh. right? And then th that idea of it um, being sourced from the vineyard. Uh, just for that one spot, call it a private label, just off on the shelf, pulled from the cask and from the barrel and served in a carafe at the table, like delivers, right? It totally delivers. And That's we like, did the work. Cause yeah. I'm saying that these, these wines deliver, not all of them delivered. And I'm saying that we, we. Not all of them <laughs> delivered. I'll tell you right now, we did some work. 
our staff. We've got no, a trailer. When I said you got to taste all the box wines. You're like, what do you mean? I'm like, no, I seriously yeah. want you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know, I know. All of them. So it's good to go go there. Talk I, about I, it. I, you know what? I was afraid. I you went in were. there. I was intimidated. <laughs> I looked at the shelves and I didn't recognize a lot of them. But I remember saying, oh, people that put You know what? This is this is something that's going to be um, maybe maybe uh, un. Um, what do you call it? Like uh, unmanipulated, and maybe just like like held back just a little bit. Um, I stayed away from like the big oaky chardonnays or what I thought would be that because it seemed too obvious. I stayed away from like the big oaky cabernets because I thought again that that would be too obvious. Um, but I wanted to like find some surprises, so I still pulled a box or two, you know, to yeah. see if they delivered. And what I was like met with was. Some that that like came through, and I said, I'm so I'm happy that this came from a box because I wouldn't have given it the credit. Totally. Uh, and others, I looked at and said, that's just poor winemaking. the The quality of the wine to begin with isn't great. So it's not that not, it's from a box. It's exactly. Just, it's not that it's from a box. It's like evaluating the wine itself, regardless yeah. of whatever it's packaged in. You know. Yeah. And if you're, you know. If you're making, I'm oh, sorry, you should pour that. Yeah, well, but if you're, you know. If you're yeah. waiting song, to, so. you know, drink a wine in 10 years, yes, you're going to want it in glass because that's going to um, last a little longer. But if you're <laughs> drinking a wine within the week and you see one of these on the shelf, totally get it. It's a great deal. So that's a pro, right? When yeah. we talked about like pros and cons yes. and we, we like sort of like mentioned the idea of like why we would do it or what's good about it or if it makes sense. Like it, it stays uh, clean, um, fresh in a box on a shelf in your refrigerator. They say four to six weeks, but I doubt you're letting it sit for four to six <laughs> weeks. Um, but you, you know, like call it two weeks, you're good. Totally this good. is this is like this is stre like I keep going back to this idea of like it being stress free and guilt free. Go over there, pour yourself a glass, have a little bit while you're making dinner. Yes. <gasps> In the middle, you know, like like have some with dinner. Have start start the the the, mi the, the middle of your afternoon. You just need a break. Have a sip. It's okay. It's cool. Totally it's from the cool. box. It's fresh. It's better than what you would get if you were storing it in a bottle. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think um, the Boda Box, I actually particularly love this wine. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll take us through it, yeah. Yeah, um, so this wine is from California. Okay. And it's called a Bota Box because it's inspired by uh, this like Spanish tradition to use like this like, which is called a Bota. It's like a wine skin that was used for travelers, uh, Spanish. Yeah based travelers going through the countryside and so that's why it's called this but um you know it's i'm it's 100 percent. i don't know looking at this one 100 percent recyclable mm -hmm. very very cool and they guarantee 30 days freshness out of the it's really good so even yeah mm -hmm. and it and honestly when i'm looking at markers for sauvignon blanc it's 100 percent sauvignon blanc right so wh uh, when i'm looking at markers for it this has all of the things that I want in a Sauvignon Blanc, mm -hmm. you know? Um, I just got what another pineapple gummy. Oh this my is my favorite. I want to do this. With Lee Moy, you know? And this, with Sauvignon Blanc, brings out like a little bit more of like that, that citrus, that, um, that, that Meyer lemon, and maybe even something a little sweeter, like Clementine or something like that. It's so good. Maybe it's just because it's gummy bears. Paper gummy, bear, gummy bears are lean more anything. than anything. But the Sauvignon Blanc tastes, uh, you know, like when we think about food and wine pairing, we, we want it to enhance the experience. This here, both low level, stress free, guilty pleasures, something chuggable, something f fun and snacky. You have it together, and then like this light bulb goes off. It's so good. <laughs> it tastes good. I'm so embarrassed by how good oh. it tastes. Okay. <clears throat> oh, it's so good. Um, but you know, like when we talked about Boda Box and we talked uh, up about some other like wines and walking the shelves, this is a, a, I guess a producer that will do the entire lineup. Yeah. Right. Sauvignon Blanc, Chardonnay, different Sauvignon Blancs, Pinot Gris, Pinot Noir, and Cabernet. And I looked at it and just said, you know, I, I kind of like have an idea of like what that might taste like. Yeah. And if, if you can do that with a wine that you see on a shelf, and then it delivers. Uh, 
like you've they've just done you the biggest service. Yes. At all, because you would hate to walk into a, a store, go to a shelf, and have to wonder if this is going to be dry or sweet, yeah. full bodied or light, um, and if it says Sauvignon Blanc, it tastes like a Sauvignon Blanc. Like that's a win for me. Yeah. And I'll tell you, like. Nelly and I have tasted Sauvignon Blancs from all around the world, right? We've, mm -hmm. we've tasted every oh, level. Oh, we can be the biggest snobs. Sometimes. Yeah, maybe. Sometimes, yeah, but. Maybe, maybe you a little more. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, yeah, but yeah. no, 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 but like, but Sauvignon Blanc is like the easy, the, the one of the greatest, greatest joys of like uh. having a simple, easy sipper, right? Yeah. Going to lunch. Or it's just a, like, I mean, I will say, I mean, if yeah. there's no champagne, that's the first thing that I'm... I'm yeah. Yeah. Well, you um, know it's going to be dry. Yeah. You want it to be dry, and you want it to be, like, fruity. So. Yeah, yeah, I think this is, like, right on top of exactly what I want for yeah. Sauvignon Blanc. Um, and I don't want it to have a whole lot of oak on it, too. No. Yeah. I know. Okay, we're going to keep moving let's along. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Um, and we're going to go into the old Westminster <laughs> Pinot Gris next. Um, it's in a can. Look at oh! that. How cute is that? So cute! Oh my it's God. out of Maryland. I like. I wow. started like sourcing all these things. This wasn't on a shelf, but I went through and like I searched a lot of wines that that may not be on a shelf. I'm asking distributors like, what's interesting? What's cool? What's new? And what's next? And I'm looking for can wine, something good. This came across. So the, like my palate, the packaging, cool, striking. Uh, I was like, yeah, but you know, they have uh, canned wines and box wines have they have way more creativity with what's what's around and the availability of it. Uh, and that's enough. That's enough. And here we oh go my again. Gosh. You know, keep in mind that this is a 12 ounce can, and um, oh yeah, Mark. <laughs> Mark mm. wants some. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Mark wants you. some. Yeah, I don't want to distract you. Yeah. Oh, you're yeah, yeah. so bad. Like, like this is a good one. This is a good one, right? Look at this. I love it. I'd say that like uh, a couple of things. Like when what registered um, for me was I want something different. I want something exciting. Um, it's canned wine. It's something that that should be consumed relatively quickly. Mm. Um, and it's in a format that 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 I, if I did this. That's a full bottle of wine. So be careful when you're drinking it at home. Ooh. Just pour it a couple. You don't have to drink the entire can before it's all said and done. Wow. That's 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 plenty. That's Half a can is one serving. Um, and stay with that. We put it in a glass so we can we can evaluate the wine for quality and let's see what's here. Right? Wow. For those of you at home, are you loving this? Are you tasting this? Cool, huh? So different. It so good. So good. Smells amazing. Right? I love it's like yeah. bone dry. I love it. Well, you know, just on the nose, right? Obviously, this is this is Pinot Gris from Maryland with skin contact. Maryland. You know, yeah. <gasps> Pinot Gris in itself is gray, so it has more of that darker pigment to it. Sits on its skin, it leaches some of that color after you press it. All the juice that you would get from any grape, red, white, green, uh, comes clear. Yeah. You keep it with the skin, it'll leach some of that color. So that's how you get it. Whether it's rosé or, or pinot gris. This is this is skin contact pinot gris. So one question about like tannins. Can you talk through with that skin contact? Are you picking up any tannin? Do you have any of that mouthfeel? Oh like, yeah, let's see. Kind of let's see when we get there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna get there. I've got I've I've tasted through these wines before, so I've got the answer, but I wanna I wanna like I I think I wanna see it in the moment. But I wanna I want you to follow along and see what's there. This is a cool and interesting wine. Cool. When I'm thinking about like um, n like natural wines, mm -hmm. I feel like this flavor profile is like kind of it for me. This yeah. like dry but like interesting, little bit funky but very drinkable. Oh, funky, yeah. You know, and I think that like natural wines like this for me, I yep. don't know if they really like categorize themselves as natural wine, but for me, this is like what I'm looking for in like a really clean tasting yeah, natural wine. Yeah, exactly, right? exactly. Yeah, right, when we talk about all those things, right, we talk about the elements of even within the Matica. Yes. Low intervention, low sulfur, organically grown, sustainable in the vineyards, carefully thought through. Just good as, for the earth. Yeah, good yeah, for the earth. through the winemaking process. Yeah. Like I liken that to, I think what all of us would say, as a really good quality 
um, chef who's taking care of the product. That's what winemaking is for many of these people that are calling it natural wine. Um, what it looks like in the glass can be a different outcome because of so many different procedures in making wine to begin with as it's sort of like alive and fermenting. You don't have control over a lot of those things, so you have to almost be a little more careful with it. But when you hit wins like this, they go such a long way. Um, I paired it with Doritos Cool Ranch. Oh, I'm, I'm glad so we have our own bag. I'm so excited. Well, this is also like one of the snacks that I would just like want. We're like and snacky people though. We're like, you're right. we you like can eat, tell. We eat chips. Yeah. <laughs> We're not real thin. I'm saying we're like, we eat, we eat well, mm -hmm. but mostly the well is chips. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I could, I could munch on these Doritos and, and put down Chablis or any other wine totally. all afternoon. I know. And, and not feel, feel terrible about it. Well, I urge the people at home, so take a sip of this wine first. Mm -hmm. mm. Tastes that, like a slight bitterness, that really gorgeous grapefruit, like slight oh. raspberry notes to it, yeah. right? And then and then have the Doritos and then go back to the wine. Right. And then tell me how different it is. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so different, right? Yep. Yeah, the Cooler Ranch Doritos. And whatever you get, and whatever, whenever you're introducing different things to your pairing, this is a level of salt and MSG and all those fun things that you don't really sort of equate when you're getting to them and sodium, right? Like even charcuterie, but it plays a huge role in making you enjoy the wines. So this in itself, something salty, something savory, something that's got a little more coolness to it. Mm. <laughs> but you know what? I love the wine. I love, I love like putting it in, in, um, in a glass. Uh, I love the aromatics of it. I think if you put it in the glass, you can get more of it. I think the service of leaving it in a can makes it like a little more accessible, um, portable. A little more juggable. Sne more chuggable. But when you put it in a glass, it just adds to something a little different. But try that. Yeah. Hey, Nelson. What's up? Um, a couple questions on the chat. One, where can we find this wine in stores? People love it. Yeah. And yeah. What, what, <gasps> is so what is natural wine? Can you explain? Sure. If people, if everyone gets hearing about natural wine. Yeah. What does that really mean? Yeah. For another wine like this, in order to get um, 300, we just needed a like tell them to bring in 300 and once people taste it they'll love it so i'm not sure um where it's being sold in state but but um there's gonna be a like i want more of it i think there's a demand for for this type of fun not just packaging but the wine in itself um, as far as what natural wine looks like there's so many different tiers and categories of it so uh, if i can attack that just generally um wines that's made maybe in smaller production uh, I think of it as a chef, as a winemaker, where they're working closely with the vineyards, organic, natural, um, and it's and it's a production. Um, when I say sustainable, you know, low sulfur, um, low oak. Um, what else? What else would there be? Um, you know, in the vineyards themselves, or not just organic, but the fi following like all these other like natural movements of of like life and, and the earth, so. I think um, that we come from a different perspective too because we've tasted wines that have a lot of money behind them, a lot of polish and uh, natural wines have a specific taste. I don't know about you, but yeah. when I taste oh. a natural wine, I, it, I kind of always get it. It's yeah. like almost always bone dry um, and it always has like a natural fermentation right. to it. They're just a little funkier, a little less polished and I understand why people love it because it's kind of cool, you know. I think it's you know it's a little uh, it's a little kind of like underdog esque, oh, right? Because these producers are usually younger producers, and they're experimenting and they're putting all of their money and effort into these projects that may not have you know an audience for them, right. you know. And so stuff like this is exciting. Right. They can they can branch out. They can experiment. They yeah. are Not all wine should be through. like you know put in the bottle for 40 years and then right. we're going to drink it in 2040. Like no, yeah. like not all wine is for that, yeah. you know. They they treat it as something that's alive in the can in yes. the bottle anywhere. It's it, you know like I I say um that it has like like kombucha-like qualities. Yes. That's just a very generalized term, but I say it's sour, 
I say that in a, in a technical world, they're using different types of yeast, or ambient yeast altogether, not something that you're introducing where it's cleaning up the wine. So these are yeast that are just found on the grapes as you bring them in, or, or, or yeast that's active in the winery itself yes. and just attacking uh, the product. From there, you're making wine. You put it in a vessel, you ferment it completely dry. Hopefully you can do that. And then you, you store it for a while. Then you bottle it and then you sell it. If you love wines like this, I think I feel like on the higher end, you know, people like Nate Reddy, you yeah. know, at High You Wines, amazing. Those are like incredible wines. Those mm -hmm. wines are Antica Terra. These people that have devoted their lives to natural wines. And then on the other end of the spectrum is these wines, you know? Yeah. If you love this flavor, I think you should dig into it. There's such a beautiful and and amazing tapestry of people that are devoted to these types of wines. Right. And if it's your thing, like it's your thing, you know? If you're smelling and tasting these at home and you're like, this is my wine, like mm -hmm. please. There are so many like hippie hipsters that are that just <laughs> need you so much because they believe in these kinds yeah. of wines and you know the the land stewardship yeah like yeah. the i do too they're absolutely delicious i know they, they have more meaning more soul I'll, they're not as commercial oh. um, all those fun things that sort of like speak to like what we want as far as like something genuine and unique yeah. um and having that connection you know i think a lot of songs kind of poo poo at. Natural wines, though, because they are not made in the same styles of these, like all the wines that are here, you know. Yeah. Um, but they have their place, you know. And, there, and there's last thing we'll say about it. Sorry. Uh, we'll no, stop. no, no, we'll no, stop no. Stop talking about we how need, great we can, keep, we can keep going on it. <laughs> but it is, it is so many different levels and layers of it that, like, like everything that you'll see up on these shelves, yeah, you'll see like like large scale production, or you'll see something that's done um, carefully. And then you'll see producers that you may say like, oh cool, they're from France or from Italy or from Spain or whatever, um, even done locally. And actually more of them are natural than, than not. They may not just be saying that they're they natural and all, uh, but, but the practices are, are totally. that of like something sustainable and natural. I love that. Oh, Ooh, no! Oh, you keep giving me too much wine. Yeah. <laughs> oh my well, God, our food is here! Yes. Okay. We well, yes. Is that, is that too early? Well, yeah, yeah bring right. it in. Right. Bring it in. If it's, it's hot. hot. Right now. Give Ooh, it up. Ooh, yeah. I yeah, want so some. <gasps> and her. I said this here. I'm going to take these away from you. Are you so jealous? Yeah, yeah. Edder hasn't had any. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Edder hasn't had this, and he's so jealous. None of us have had these. I have never had these. We do all the tasting. Okay, so we're going to get these out of the way here. Okay, we can go. Oh, my gosh. I was so excited. This is so cool. I'm doing it. All right. Oh, it smells great. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, it's hot. It's so hot. hot. Don't burn yourself. Ooh. Okay. Well, for our, uh, advice for you watching work. at home, let, let it cool down just a little bit. Oh, yeah, it's warm. <laughs> 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 you know, um, I want you know, like, well, let this chill for a little bit. Oh, God, I want to drink too. I've had this wine and I passed by, this is house wine out of Washington, something that's like so cool. <gasps> oh. I don't know if it's cool, I mean, it's cool all to the me. time, I think but it's when cool. I walk by it on a shelf, I'm like, clever. Like, just like the idea of what it's like to have, again, low stress, easy going, fun drinking wine. You call it house wine, like, like brilliant packaging um, from the inception of it and then throughout its line. <gasps> I'm so excited. And I, and I always ask myself, like, I, like, I wonder if it's good, <gasps> you know, and I'm like, I hope it's good I'm because they that. sell a ton of it. They do. Yeah, and then we kind of went through, and and I've actually had some of the sparkling and some of the white. They were fantastic, and the reds. I'm like, well, I'd rather buy a <laughs> bottle of wine, uh, and and then um, like we do, we go in and we experiment and we start to like, like um, investigate for ourselves. But it's so, hard not to be stoked on this because it was like born in Walla Walla, right? Yeah. Like we live Homegrown. in Washington, yeah. right? Success story. 
It's yeah. a Charles Smith wine. Yeah, originally and then originally. now on its own. Yeah. Yes, now on its own. Um, I have a winemaker. But, but the same thing here. Like how? Hull, Those are Hull. a great job. Yeah. You Land want Voigt. it says it says Pinot Noir. You want it to taste like a Pinot Noir, right? Oregon's our neighbor. They do great Pinot Noir. Um, things in a can here. Oh my God, yeah. It's good. It's right, solid. right. It's it's uh, like it's it's it delivers. It delivers. Yeah. That's what I'm looking for. Right. When I'm looking at Pinot Noir, I'm looking for these, especially mm. Pinot mm -hmm. Noir coming from mm. up here. You know these like bouncy raspberry notes. It's like yep. bram, like signature bramble. I mean, and it delivers. Yeah. It smells but, like effing Pinot Noir. It smells like Pinot Noir. <laughs> it smells like Pinot Noir. When I smell it, um, I get sort of like that bright red fruit. I get cranberries, I get cherries, I get pomegranate. I get like this earthiness, rhubarb, I get a little bit of a cola note. Pinot Noir, that's where it hits me. Uh, I put it on the palate, medium bodied, a little bit of spice that follows me. I'm like, it's good. It like, you know, maybe, that, maybe, maybe this can isn't what's always gonna be like uh, at the table, but it's something you put in your bag and you take with you to a park on road trips so after you're camping, right, right, after you've done all that. And then like you pop the can open and you sit down and you settle for a little bit. All right, so that's- Oh my that's... gosh, this went so fast. Look at how little I have left. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, embarrassing. Okay. Well, well, let's go for it. Let's finish it. It's pretty oh, tasty. It's it a great Pinot Noir. Really I love good. smelling it. I, you just want to keep going back to the aromatics of the wine. It's subtle. Yeah, despite what it looks like as a can, it's like you see it all over the place. It's produced for sure. You know, like like it's available. It is as good as it comes for something in a can. And it's hard to yeah. think about like, for those of you who aren't in Washington State, like this is, you know, it's really special that this came from Walla Walla initially. Yeah. You know, it's, it's really cool. And I think that um, for us, because we live in Seattle, it's, I'm a little proud of it. I am too. If someone in the middle of the country or on the East Coast gets this box, you're like, actually, it's pretty solid. Oh. And that is, you know what? Like, I'm cool with that. <laughs> I'm pretty cool with it being mm -hmm. like a solid wine. <gasps> well, you're proud. Did you just stick into that? How yeah. dare you? Well, you're proud, right? <laughs> like, you see it and you're like, yeah, well, house wine, that's kind of like started in Washington. You know, that's Charles. That's cool. You put it on the palate, it's good. It's Doing really it. good. This dish, Swedish meatballs, you guys, it's a huge win. I'm not sure what yours tastes like, but, or how it turned out, it's fantastic. I'm so oh, excited. It's so good. <laughs> Are you having this yet? Oh, okay. Okay. No, pour me my wine. Yeah. Shoot it. We're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna do something different with the next wine. Tell me, tell us. One other thing that we talked about. Pros and cons, you know, one con kind of feels like sometimes that that you do a box wine that it's a, that's just a little cheap, that it can be maybe less quality, of lesser quality, um, that you're maybe trying to get away with something. Tastes like plastic. Tastes like plastic. Yeah. yeah. Every once in a while, you know, you pick it up and you're so maybe influenced by it that it kind of triggers that. But but here's what we're gonna do: instead of just going straight from the box. Um, imagine you're hosting a party or you're at home and you've got a couple of people over, a small group of people. You don't need to bring this box over to the table. That's silly, you know? Do this. Do you want one of these? Like, I have... Oh. That? <clears throat> no, Nelly, no! Yeah. What? No, I think you should do something else. They don't have that decanter at home. I know, no one has this decanter okay, at home. I'm saying well, that like, you have like, okay, for me, the yeah. decanter that I use at home <laughs> okay. is also a flower vase. Okay, <laughs> and, and I, know, I, know, I know you're like, oh, you're insane, Erica, but honestly. This is what we'll do. <laughs> I'm saying that anything that you want to use as a decanter can be a decanter. And for mm -hmm. guests, if you're, I mean, remember a time when you would have people in your home? <laughs> You know, before COVID, I'm saying that it, that would be cool. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. At some point, when you do have home, people in your home, Thanksgiving is coming up. Like, putting wine in a decanter is cool. 
Like, no one needs to know. No one needs to know that it came from a bag. No one needs to know whatever. Like, just put it like this. Just like that. Do you see it? I'm Drop sorry. it. I'll move it. On the table. Be proud. Because once they get a chance to taste what's in the in the glass, it's cool. It is yeah. cool. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Low, you know, we keep saying like low unless stress, you have Nelly, easy. If, unless you invited Nelson to dinner. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, everyone else in the world unless, is totally no, cool with it. You know, I'm not judgmental like that. You, <laughs> I know but, you are. <laughs> but. I know you aren't. I but, know you are. I'm, but I'm, but I'm not like that. But maybe sometimes people are saying like they what they no, want, no, no, no. what they want um, from the experience. And and okay, cool. Then that's when you open a special bottle. You've got a couple of special bottles. Just do one. Do one um, special bottle. Have and something. the rest box is totally cool. Yeah, and have something you just want to drink along the way, right? Not everything has to be like this special occasion three liter of Ridge Montebello if you want us to open it. Um, <laughs> to be honest, like... Have one. A little insider tip from someone Ooh, who yeah, drinks too much. Um, I will say that if you have a special bottle, open it up immediately yeah. before your guests get drunk. Some tip. Okay? I'm yeah. saying that by, if you finish three of these boxed wines, they will not remember <laughs> your perfect wine at the end. Open yeah. it up first. And then all these box wines, like, yeah. as far as quality goes, start high and keep going because and everyone is just getting Italy. drunker mm -hmm. and drunker, right? Mm -hmm. you know, like, that goes for bottles and boxes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. That's a universally applied. I think it's a good. I think yep. that's a good tip. I would. I would say that. Yeah. Yeah. Always mm. like always pour your, because we get palate palate fatigue is real, mm -hmm. right? Like you can only discern wine to a point until right. you've exhausted your palate and your mm -hmm. and your mind, right? Um, but yep. anyway, I mean, I wanna hear what you guys have to think about these pairings, There's right? a lot of questions about uh, how effective that very expensive decanter is as a <gasps> Oh my <laughs> just, God, just, let me tell so you. So for, for other recreational purposes, not that we've ever experimented with that, but does Riedel make a good bong? There's a lot of questions around. Oh, so. cool. Yeah. I love does it. it make a good bong? You know what? I, they probably do. I, I probably missed the class I the other night. Well, they, they consulted with Chihuly on other projects, and um, they've done some really cool, I would say beautiful decanters, but in the end, I want it to be functional, and I want it to be like easy to clean. So a decanter like that, I don't use it on the floor personally, um, because they take up a lot of table space, um, they may give too, it may be too dramatic for what you need. I love it. But that <laughs> does, like when you bring that out into the, into the dining room, people are looking. People are looking, yeah. And, and, um, and it takes a, a little bit to clean, but it's, it's worthwhile, so yeah. As someone who cleans all the decanters here, <laughs> yeah. I think it's fine. Yeah, I know. No. I use I use the decanter, and then you like we have everyone clean it. Yeah, I'm good. the one that, that yeah. cleans all the decanters, <laughs> and honestly, like it's fine. Just as you, just as you said that, I just want to acknowledge that Elton is on. Uh, the chat, Elton, one of our sommeliers and a beloved employee here for years and years, has kind of been helping me out um, on the chat and helping Brian out. He's around the corner here, and and just as you said that, Nelly, he was actually talking about the mix. Choose a decanter, but but make sure it's easy to clean. You know, I, I think this is one of the things. If, I'm just going to interrupt for a second, if I can, and, and um, I think this is one of the things that makes me most excited about. Um, a, a, about doing a show like this is that people don't really understand how many gummy bears we eat, how we put ice in our wine, um, how how the Canless Wine Team is just a bunch of normal folks who really enjoy, um, honestly, uh, wines. Like, we don't drink at home the wines that we're serving necessarily on the table all the time. And I think the philosophy of the cellar has always been um, that we have uh, so many wines that we could pick one, to the person and to the occasion and to the uh, the person that's coming in. And sometimes, honestly, that's a box wine. Like the, the philosophy of wine is just that you can open it and enjoy it and toast and raise a glass and, and take away the pomp and the circumstance and all this sort of, I don't know, stuff that goes along with this whole thing. I just think sometimes we take ourselves too seriously um, in the wine world and, and we're famous for that. And if you, and, Obviously, hard articles coming out tonight today about sommeliers and what's happening 
in the wine community, um, we we are guilty in, uh, of sometimes in the wine community just taking ourselves too seriously. And so um, one of my favorite things about this class in particular is that I, there's no acting actually going on here. This is really, um, this is the kind of the stuff we do. And it's true, we don't do a whole lot of boxed wine drinking, but um, deep down, I think uh, this team is just a, a bunch of really sort of super normal folks. So anyway, I just, I'm sorry to interrupt Nelly and um, and Erica. I, I, I'm kind of going off my soapbox there, but I just kind of had to remind people just kind of how normal we all we Well, all are. you know, like what we drink in the restaurant and what we drink at home is like two separate things. Like I don't mind going to the shelf, on a shelf, and like... One more. One more. Oh, one more? <laughs> And just like getting some box <laughs> wine or something like that. It's cool. I mean, like, that's that's like how I live. Like Chablis, Sauvignon, a light red oh or something from a can. God. Like, I'm okay with that. Um, gummy bears, oh, Lihimoi <laughs> crackers, the Himimaru Japanese crackers I'm sorry, are amazing. I'm taking you seriously. I'm trying. I'm yeah. trying. But, like, well, yes. you know. talk about yeah, it. Nelly talk and I have it. plans after this. So. We got, you know, like, we've got a three minute limit because we got to go. Um, but these are some of our favorite things to eat. And, like, I think the idea of it was, like, to get something that we could do at home, easy. Um, with a TV dinner and strip away all the pomp and circumstance because um, that can happen down the road for one bottle, for one occasion. If I'm having dinner at home, just like have, be cool. Um, be cool. Yeah, I got some pizza at home. I'm going to have some. for Halloween is what I want to know. I, I don't is know one yet. Of these I don't know. Happening? I mean, let's just be honest. We're days away here. You know, right? I want something a little lighter. I want like some Ramona or a spritz oh, or something Ramona. like that. Oh no! I want to like warm up uh, well, and then no. have like one or two special bottles, you, like good bottles, you know? Yeah, and yeah. just like have you fun with it. You can also go spice wine. I mean, a lot of people don't know how to trick or treat this some year. Some wine, yeah. I think we're just gonna sit out, m mull the wine up, and just kind of shoot the candy out. Yo, if a Ramona wants me to be their like, rep, like I'm right there, like. I'm Find cool. her. I'm like very cool. Classic <laughs> to big. just so classy. I'm here. We call her Big Cat. For a reason. Mm -hmm. ooh, ooh, ooh. Well, we're winding down now, so <laughs> let's see. We can take a couple more questions if we got them. Um, but sort of like to wrap things up, I want to say that this was so cool. You know, I would like like if we walked away um, would wanted to give advice for like people drinking box wine, the pros and cons. Kind of we looked at them. You know, box wine sometimes. Uh, let's let's go down the list. Like, what do we have? Like, what's a, what's something that we didn't okay. talk about yet? Pro is that it's environmentally responsible. Like yeah, the butter box, time. completely recyclable. So cool. Hundred percent. Um, con, some people feel like it's too cheap. Not serious. Yeah. Like, you know. Um, yeah. Limited in selection. Like I go down the we, I go down the line and I'm like. It took us a long time to find these Six different butter box. Cool, but I want Sauvignon Blanc. Yes. Yeah. And then so it's so so when we talk about Frank the Tank or other reds <laughs> so uh, or other things in a can, um, <laughs> you want something delicious and good. You know, I think with the last red wine, maybe just like on that riper side. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but but fine, fine. You know, like um, if you're gonna open something special, or you're looking for something special, go for a bottle. The tank, by the way, the tank rosé. Um, it was forty percent Grenache, thirty-five percent. Syrah and 15% Carignan for yeah. anyone at home who cares about that kind of thing. But I love it. Yeah. Are you not loving it? I, Especially I dig with it. This? I dig it. Grenache is like, we oh. talked about the last time. Stick with one grape variety. Follow it all the way through. Explore that and it's a great way to start. Grenache has been, still then for me, one of my early loves and has continued to deliver. Yeah. I follow it. I see it in different countries. Um, this one here is from France. It blends well with other grape varieties, um, and it's relatively inexpensive. Hey, Nelly, one of the questions that's come up a couple of times, I know we just got like 30 seconds here, but yeah. a lot of people asking about a couple of the bottles behind you. Yeah. Can you just grab a couple? I know we're doing Treasures of the Canvas Cellar next week, but we got a 15-liter here. Can you just yeah. show? Are we you, drinking? No, we're not drinking. Oh, we're just God. showing. We'll oh, grab a cup. They want to know what's in the bottles. Oh, Pull a couple of those out. Pair it with a meatball. What? No. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, well, what, let's are the, do... what are in the big bottles? People want to know what are in the big bottles. Oh, this is Beaujolais. No, Chateau no. T-Van. So more. this is Bojo. 
That's many good. Is that? That's six. That's a that's a three liter. That's, that's a, a big three okay, liter. That's a Wait, three liter. Woodward. No, Woodward. Oh, th this this here, Bionic Frog, out of Walla Walla. That's from Magnum. That's by Kristoff. Yo, that's a that's a unicorn that's a royal wine. Kid. Uh, here's For white those wine, of you who Sauvignon follow, Blanc. Like, wine stuff. That's a unicorn wine. We're gonna talk about some unicorns. What vintage unicorns. C Lex is that? We well, 2005, one that Diddy oh. made, no big deal. Oh, and then this. Five. People want to see that. I think people want to see oh. that also. Oh, this? The Nebuchadnezzar? Oh. <laughs> Nelly. The 15 liter? We drink this at our staff party. Yes, we do! <laughs> I remember we l like We're lugged it over. Hamlet. I'm not proud, but it took 45 minutes. It took that like <laughs> record time for our staff. We we brought it over in a cooler, and then we put it into decanters, and then went straight into plastic cups. True. But a bottle like this is special, and we kept we we bought a few of them just so that it could. Like be ours. One day we're gonna do that again. We're yeah, gonna serve these to people to tonight. It's box wine in the box future. And Who knows? <laughs> Thank you all for tuning in. Um, signing off. Nelson what? the cat. No, 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 no. <laughs> Big stay, cat. Stay forever, please. Oh, we gotta go. No. We got a party to go <laughs> no, to. No, we don't want. <laughs> yes. No. Okay. Okay. Fine. I'll see you later. And we have things Thank to do. Thank you all. Yes. I'll see you next week. <laughs> Bye.